Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with a follow-up uh, to the Q-Tractor tutorial. Um, it's a tutorial that I made for Q-Tractor quite some time ago, within the last year, um, and it goes over all of the basic setup needs that you you need to know about to use Q-Tractor uh, effectively and completely. Uh, there's one thing I want to address here today, though, uh, that I've come across. It's actually an old problem, but I've been fortunate enough to not have to deal with it until just recently as I've been trying to use Pipewire as my audio server. Uh, I'm on Ubuntu Studio 21.10, so it's the current version, and I've enabled Pipewire, which if you're not aware, Pipewire is the audio server that is uh, set to replace kind of this combination of Alsa Jack Pulse Audio uh, that we've been using uh, for all this time uh, in Linux uh, audio uh, applications. And uh, what Pipewire does is it mimics the internals, the back end of these other servers, and kind of combines them into one sort of stream and one sort of application that drives everything. Uh, and the end goal, I think, is to make the transition between these different servers more seamless, more unified, more connected, uh, and, and uh, more readily able to default to a proper setup rather than requiring the user uh, to adjust settings and and set up routing and and try to get everything to work together these separate app these separate servers uh, uh, making them really essentially one server so what what pipewire does is it spoofs these other servers and then applications that depend on a diverse array of servers uh, will see pipewire uh, and think that it's pulse audio or jack or also or whatever and then um, Pipewire just runs the show. So I, I've been doing this, and I discovered when I switched to Pipewire and on the on the latest um, version of Ubuntu Studio, things stopped working with respect to bus routing and QTractor. Now, in my searches on uh, the developer's page, I, I found uh, from from feedback uh, uh, from from him that this is an old problem that was around on certain combinations of hardware uh, with Jack server from years in the past. And that is this idea that Jack does not really appreciate the plugging in of outputs from QTractor into QTractor's own inputs, that it does not necessarily pass signal um, when that is done inside of the connections bay over here. Um, now, I have found that my hardware has always been able to do this. I've never had a problem with that. I think many, many years ago when I was first looking at QTractor, I noticed that buses didn't route, and I just stopped using QTractor. I was using LMMS at the time and some other things. Um, but since then, I have never seen that show up again. I've always been able to just plug directly my buses into other buses and mix down. And in the QTractor tutorial uh, that I posted within the last year, I talk about routing buses in this way. Now, the fact is, is that this does not always work. In fact, more often than not, apparently, historically, it has not worked very well because of this limitation in Jack. You see, QTractor does not is not really a fully inclusive application. It is a sequencer uh, that stands apart from the audio server. The audio server is what really handles the connections, and that would be Jack in this case. Uh, and that's why the developer really insists on calling QTractor a sequencer rather than a digital audio workstation, because uh, in his view, it is it has limitations that are never going to be really uh, resolved. It will always just be the sequencer side of the workflow. Uh, now, I argue that QTractor does a whole lot more than that, that since it handles MIDI and it handles audio um, in terms of the interface and, and because it handles effects and because it handles chaining and it, because it handles routing and whatnot, uh, even though the back end is the audio server, I still think, you know, this is quite legitimately uh, a fully fledged digital audio workstation. It just is a very dependent one. It's dependent on the server capabilities. Um, uh, so that being said, 
we have to deal with the limitations of the Jack audio server uh, in terms of the routing. And because Jack has this little bit of a quirk, it can leave you kind of up the creek whenever you're trying to route uh, your buses together and get a, a mix down setup, bus to bus to bus, and then down to your master. So there are a couple of workarounds uh, that you can do. Uh, one of them is to use any other available sound card input output. So if you'll notice here on my setup, I've got these other uh, devices. These are HDMI slots, and I, these are fairly virtual because I only have one HDMI in and out. Uh, but I've got up to three slots. I have an HDMI 1, HDMI 2, HDMI 3, input and output. One thing you can do is you can route your first bus layer through the input of another card uh, jack and then take that to the output of that card to the next bus. That resolves the problem because it inserts a piece of hardware between the uh, input-output connections in Q-Tractor. It means that Q-Tractor is sending to jack, jack then sends through a card, and then the card then comes back into Q-Tractor, and that allows the signal to pass through. Um, now, this can be useful if you're doing a very limited kind of mix down, and if you have these, you know, kind of virtual slots available in your, your sound card setup. This may not be the case for most people. Um, so that's one option, and that keeps everything relatively internal to your project file. You load up the project file, those connections will be there on that hardware. Now, it's a problem if you want to take that project file and move it to another piece of hardware. It won't necessarily uh, work because these these um, uh, sound card level jacks won't exist uh, unless you're on exactly the same setup, right? Same computer, same kind of um, board level sound card environment. The other option, uh, and this is what this is something I wanted to get away from, but it's it's actually a pretty benign option. It's not really that complicated, and if if you follow a sort of sequence of events, you can make it work. Uh, but this option is to use Carla, an external instance of Carla, which I have here. So I've loaded in an external instance of Carla, and you see that what I've placed here are, th uh, in my case, I needed three um, analyzers. These are just calf analyzers. And the analyzer is really, it does nothing to the signal. It just analyzes the signal and, and shows you uh, in graph form what the signal looks like, and that can be useful in mixing. Uh, to know where certain frequencies are heavy and where they're light. Um, but I'm just using these sort of as a pass-through module, and I've put three of these in there because I needed three to get to the different buses that I'm, I'm trying to get to. So if we look inside at the patch bay here, inside of this Carlos session, you'll see what's going on. Uh, these are my virtual uh, card jacks here. We'll just slide these out of the way. What I have is my Q tractor session, and I have my instruments, my MIDI instruments, feeding down to these buses. And that level of signal works. The problem is going from these buses to the next bus. So what I do is I take all of my instruments and I push them through bus 1. So all of the instruments, input, output, uh, or rather output left and right, go into the left and right of, of this um, analyzer, which I labeled bus 1. And then this output goes to the input of the next bus and Q tractor. And adding this one layer between this uh, routing allows the signal to pass um, because Jack sees this separate entity, this separate module, uh, rather than uh, plugging Q tractor into itself. And it allows the signal to go through. Uh, so it's just a funny little quirk. Then what I do is I go from this bus. Uh, out to another um, analyzer module in Carla, and then I send that to my next mix down level in Q Tractor, and then I do the same thing again. I go from that mix down to the master. So I needed three levels. You can make as many of these as you need to uh, to pass down. Now the problem here is you're now dealing with kind of a complex session. You're not just dealing with a a Q Tractor file, but you don't really need to deal with a session manager because of the way Carla and Q Tractor interact with each other. So here's how this workflow uh, it, it works in terms of closing down and then opening back up again. 
Uh, what you need to do is save your projects probably in the same location so that you can find them very easily. So you want to save your Carla patch bay into the place where you've saved your uh, Q-Tractor project. Um, and then what you do is you open up Q-Tractor first, and then you're going to disconnect all of the default connections, and then you're going to open up the Carla patch bay session. And what happens is, is Carla will automatically connect all of these outputs to the proper inputs. It just does it by, uh, automatically. Carla handles all of that. And once that's done, you're ready to, to use the project. So you can see here, if we play back, uh, we're getting signal coming through all of our instruments down to the next bus, to the next bus, to the next bus. So it's a simple matter of saving uh, both of these projects and opening them in the right sequence. So just to review, you want to open up uh, Q-Tractor first, uh, disconnect all, uh, just to make sure there's no default kind of things happening there. Open up Carla. Carla will automatically route everything. The only thing you might want to uh, set up if it isn't already set in Carla is your, your final output. So I have Q-Tractor, the master out uh, is routed to the output of my choice, which is my uh, Bose earbuds right here. So um, that's how you handle this problem. It's a fairly simple fix. Uh, it does require that you use a separate Carla session. But again, if you open them in the right sequence, it seems to work every time, and it's a pretty pretty benign, low system resource uh, kind of solution to that. So uh, good luck with that, and happy mixing.